Trump's legal team says they have enough evidence that voting systems were used to rig the election to overturn the election results. And a Trump lawyer alleges that the voting system used in this election has ties to a company involved with the Venezuelan socialist regime. NTD's Grace Coulter breaks it down for us. President Trump's lawyer Rudy Giuliani is alleging that the voting systems and software used in the election are responsible for widespread voter fraud. Among the companies in question are Dominion Voting Systems and Smartmatic. Dominion is a Canadian company that's used in nearly 30 states in the U.S., including in Georgia, Nevada, Michigan, and Arizona, all of which have allegations of voter fraud. Dominion has come under increased scrutiny ever since a glitch was discovered in Michigan, where 6,000 votes for Trump were flipped to Joe Biden. And this isn't the first time Dominion has come under scrutiny. In 2019, Democratic legislators requested information about Dominion voting systems, citing security concerns. And in January this year, U.S. lawmakers also expressed concern about foreign involvement and the integrity of their systems. After questioning, CEO of Dominion revealed that they rely heavily on Chinese parts. In a tweet on Saturday, Giuliani alleged that Dominion is just a front and that the company Smartmatic was really doing the computing for the election. Smartmatic was founded by three Venezuelan engineers in 2000, and its software was first used in Venezuela. Its headquarters is now in London. However, the company has maintained close ties to socialist Venezuela, a country whose government has close ties to the Chinese Communist Party. As reported by the New York Times in 2006, Smartmatic was under investigation for its ties to the Chavez regime after he was elected through the use of Smartmatic software. Smartmatic was a little-known firm with no experience in voting technology before it was chosen by the Venezuelan authorities to replace the country's election machinery ahead of a contentious referendum that confirmed Mr. Chavez as president in 2004. Though Smartmatic has now established itself overseas, allegations of its connections with the Chavez regime continue. It is known that Smartmatic and Dominion voting systems have had close ties over the years. Venezuelan-led Smartmatic brought U.S.-based Sequoia voting systems and then sold it in 2006 after the U.S. led investigations into Smartmatic's connections to the Venezuelan regime. It's believed that at this time, Smartmatic put its technology into Sequoia. Dominion later went on to buy Sequoia in 2010 and is still its parent company. According to a report by Voter Action, in 2008, Smartmatic still had ownership of intellectual property rights for some of Sequoia's currently deployed election products. Dominion denies having any ties to Smartmatic now, though at one point Dominion also allowed Smartmatic to use its technology. In a lawsuit filed by Dominion against Smartmatic for violating a non-competition provision, it states, Dominion granted Smartmatic a worldwide non-exclusive license to certain voting systems that Dominion had developed. The license agreement granted Smartmatic rights to certain patents and patent applications that Dominion owned or controlled and to all know-how trade secrets, methodologies, and other technical information owned or possessed by Dominion. Dominion has denied all allegations. A Trump campaign lawyer and former federal prosecutor, Sidney Powell, claimed in a Sunday interview with Fox Business that election software switched millions of votes from President Trump to Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. She said they're getting ready to overturn the election results in multiple states and added that she has enough evidence of election fraud to launch a widespread criminal investigation. The Democrat media establishment, they've done everything they can to help Joe Biden and hurt Donald Trump. And in all their schemes, their maneuverings, they're willfully looking away from things they, well, don't like. They've overlooked this, that so many millions of people not only support President Trump, they love him. And I think, in a way, Donald Trump is the most powerful man in the world, not because he is president, but because he's so loved by tens of millions of people. We haven't seen anything like that in this country, at least in my lifetime, spontaneous eruptions of we love you, we love you. I think this country, this planet could be in for the awakening of the millennium, something that we haven't seen in thousands of years as this election, the truth 
is finally told. Take a look at this. Tens of millions of supporters who love him, who pray for him. On the other side, tens of millions who hate him. I think I heard somewhere that love trumps hate. Isn't that true? Folks, I think we will be in for the shock of our lifetime. This is going to be wild. And the evidence is slowly emerging. Yes, I would have liked to have seen it yesterday. But the president has some very, very smart lawyers. One of my favorites, Sidney Powell. She helped Michael Flynn beat the travesty of a case that was lodged against him. She's a former federal prosecutor. And you tell me, does she seem like she's speaking the truth? She spoke to Maria Bartiromo over the weekend. President Trump won by not just hundreds of thousands of votes, but by millions of votes that were shifted by this software that was designed expressly for that purpose. We have sworn witness testimony of why the software was designed. It was designed to rig elections. He was fully briefed on it. He saw it happen in other countries. It was exported internationally for profit by the people that are behind Smartmatic and Dominion. They did this on purpose. It was calculated. They've uh, done it before. Always make excuses for Joe Biden. When he said this, I think it was an inadvertent telling of the truth, what they used to call in Washington, D.C., a gaffe, when you tell the truth by accident. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. He just told us right there, I think he was telling the truth. He didn't mean to, he didn't want to, but he did. Now, everybody right away just made excuses. Oh, that's just Joe. Don't, no, 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 no. You don't have to listen to Joe. And uh, I'm always making excuses. But when we say things like that, ooh, we're chumps. We are deplorables. You know, I watch the Sunday shows every Sunday. It's old habit. And um, they are terrible. And they have been for a long, long time. But every now and then, the truth breaks through. On ABC, the George Stephanopoulos show, he had the day off, but they sat down with uh, three guys from Youngstown, Ohio, and they spoke more truth in about five minutes than you'll hear in a year of watching these Sunday shows. You think Donald Trump has won? Absolutely, I do. I mean, for me to believe that Joe Biden got 78 million votes, got the most votes of any president ever in the history of, of voting, I, I find that very hard to believe. Me too, Tony Esposito of Youngstown, Ohio. He was terrific, and so were his buddies. It went on from there. There's a recipe for disaster when they decided to have these mail-in votes. I don't think there's any way of proving the person that mailed that in is the person that actually did it. You look at what secretaries of state have said, they have seen no evidence of massive fraud. From my vantage point, I've... There's too many smoke and mirrors in terms of ballots appearing here, reappearing there, disappearing here, this, that, and the third. Where there's smoke, there's fire. When we deal with globalists and liberalism, I'd put absolutely nothing past them. There's no way. that, that mm -mm, It just doesn't, doesn't smell right. Too many irregularities. Join me now from Washington, D.C., constitutional law attorney and senior legal advisor for the Trump campaign, Jenna Ellis. Jenna, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Jenna, what is President Trump's path to victory at this point? Well, Stephanie, there are uh, multiple paths to victory because let's remember that there are still, still six states uh, that are in play. And so no one, uh, neither candidate, has reached the number 270 uh, for electoral college votes. And no states have yet been certified. And so President Trump is fighting for free and fair elections and to make sure that the process is counted fairly and that every legal vote is counted fairly and accurately. So what our lawsuits are, uh, are pushing for is to make sure that recount 
counts in states happen where, uh, like Wisconsin and Georgia, where that needs to happen, and then also in Michigan and Pennsylvania, that those states do not certify the results until we know that those results are not false or fraudulent. So this is uh, not just about the path to victory for President Trump. It's about restoring confidence in our election system, the legitimacy of the outcome, and making sure that the result is fair and accurate. Uh, what do you think Trump's strongest case will be? Like, which state specifically? Well, Pennsylvania right now is an absolute disaster. Uh, so if you look at not only the reports of irregularities, uh, you look at the reports of the election officials that uh, have all of these irregularities and unlawful uh, orders that they're following from election officials there. And you also look at how the state itself not only changed their election law uh, several times before the election, uh, which they, they can't do. The, the state legislature did not act in that state. And so we won a significant victory yesterday in Pennsylvania where the judge agreed that uh, the secretary of state cannot uh, tell her election officials to do anything uh, through the process that is not according to Pennsylvania state law. So there, I think that that has uh, been a great indication that the judicial branch is going to make sure that the law is followed in each state and that the results are free and fair. When it comes to poll watchers uh, who were denied, how many cases of this has the Trump campaign seen? I, I believe people have been emailing and calling and letting the Trump campaign know their personal experience. Yeah, so we're receiving uh, just a shocking amount of reports. We're still uh, looking through those, but we definitely have reports uh, that are really significant out of uh, Georgia, out of Pennsylvania, out of uh, Arizona, out of Nevada, out of uh, Michigan. And uh, so we've already filed in Michigan and Pennsylvania uh, about meaningful access. And, you know, the mainstream media wants to push back and say, well, there was a non-zero number of poll watchers. Well, that non-zero number, okay, if you only have one or two people that are 100 feet away and they're not actually able to observe what's going on, that is not according to the state law. And so that's why our lawsuits use this phrase, meaningful access, to make sure that all of our poll watchers are able to actually observe and see the ballot counts. That's the intention of the law. That's what needs to be followed. That was also a victory in Pennsylvania where the court said, yes, of course you can have meaningful access. And uh, that was, uh, was a court order. And Pennsylvania so far has failed to follow that order. Yeah. When it comes to dead people voting, obviously we've seen several examples of this. What do you think the tally or the actual number is? And how does this even happen? Yeah, well, it happens, of course, by uh, by the election officials not following the protocols for ballots and not following the law. And so when they are uh, accepting ballots that have been mailed in that don't have signature matching when they're not looking uh, and comparing against the current voter roll when they're not purging uh, the voter rolls before elections. There are many different ways that this kind of thing can happen. And so what we're trying to discover, I mean, it's been a week since Election Day. We are trying to discover the numbers and uh, we have to have some time to do that. And that's why not certifying the election results in states uh, like Nevada and Michigan and Pennsylvania and the recounts in Wisconsin and Georgia. Um, uh, all of this needs to be done fairly, and people need to expect and understand that this will take a little bit of time. And the mainstream media is just wanting to coronate Joe Biden, push this through, ignore the legal challenges, ignore all of these instances of irregularities and outright fraud that is occurring. And they just want to say, well, it doesn't matter. It's not significant enough. It's not widespread enough. And my, my question to them is, well, how much fraud is OK with you? And if this is outcome determinative, we just want to make sure that every legal vote counts. And Joe Biden and the Democrats have not come forward and said that they agree with the law and that they agree that this needs to be a fair and legitimate process. Yeah, it's interesting how the media are handling this. They're saying, oh, well, you know, there's just a few cases. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, this isn't really widespread. But they don't even want any sort of investigation. They don't want the Trump campaign to actually look into the, uh, you know, the actual potential voter fraud that's happened. I mean, there's obviously voter fraud, but like they don't want people to dig into it. And so they're ready. They're they're moving forward with the Biden transition. You look at the news coverage. They're already deciding who um, looking at who Biden might pick for his cabinet. And they're just going forward. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, well, what are they so afraid of? Uh, why not have transparency? That's why the law protects uh, meaningful access for both parties and make sure that uh, we get to that free and fair result. And so, you know, recounts and lawsuits, this is not unprecedented. That's why 
Uh, typically, states have two weeks to certify those results so that any recounts can happen if you're within the margin of a uh, they mandated a legally mandated recount um, or if there are those challenges. And so when they're just ignoring this and they're just pretending, first of all, the mainstream media said there is no fraud. And now they have to pivot and say, well, there's no widespread fraud. They keep moving the goalposts and they keep wanting to minimize this. But the truth of the matter is that this investigation is critical not only to this election result, but also to every election in the future. If any fraud gets through the system, if any of the state election officials can simply change the law and process according to their whim, then the American people can't have confidence of free and fair election results. And that's why this matters very significantly to the future of our nation. Yeah. And you hear some of the Democrats and people in the media, the talking heads, they're like, oh, well, you know, Trump's just a sore loser. The campaign, they need to like pack up and go home. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you believe the polling and this number is probably higher, 70 percent of Republicans don't believe there was a free and fair election. And and it is very important that if for some reason it is Biden who's the next president of the United States, they have to assure people that this was a free and fair election. Absolutely. And, you know, for the at least 71 million Americans that voted for President Trump, they are willing to see this process through. And they are very frustrated that the Democrats and the mainstream media are not legitimizing uh, in the media this process and that there is uh, no certification of results yet. But you know what? Not one American on the Trump side or any of the conservatives or the Republicans are going and looting and rioting and burning down cities. They're waiting on the process. This is how America works. This is how we function. We have to make sure that the law prevails. We are a nation of rules, not a nation of rulers. And last time I checked, no one in the mainstream media has given up their anchor position, their contributor position, and gone on the federal bench in Michigan or Pennsylvania. And so until they're actually the judge and the adjudicator of these lawsuits, then their opinion does not matter. They cannot simply declare Joe Biden the president and ignore the fact that we have a process of rules and we are, uh, we are a nation under the U.S. Constitution in America. All good points, Jenna. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Stephanie.